Previously on the Simply Human Podcast. We get so focused on if I just manage my time, then I could be better at eating better, meal prepping, doing more workouts, spending time with kids, insert whatever your, your priorities are. But really the struggle that exists there is that we think that we need to control things. So rather than seeing time management as this good thing, this particular chapter looks at it as what if it's really an issue with control that we have. It's episode 241 of the Simple Human Podcast with your hosts, Mark and Rick. Two human beings being human. Our goal is to help you understand how humans are designed to eat, sleep, move, and enjoy, and how you can start living more like human today. On today's show, it's Petia Kolebova. She is a woman's, women's, not women's. just one woman, yeah, women's transformation coach who helps women who have been pushed down and been playing it small due to toxic relationships or unhealed childhood trauma to create a life that is true to them and their soul porpoise. It's like she works with dolphins. No, that's nice. No, she feeds them and feeds them the fish and they cheer and clap. I, I know, that's, that's seals. That's not dolphins. Dolphins can't clap. They don't have I flippers. have a, the dorsal fins. <laughs> I have... You're, you're doing great. I have a joke for you, Rick. Uh, please, go on. I went to the zoo recently and there was just... There was a one dog in the whole zoo. That was all the <laughs> all, whole animal. It was a shit zoo. It works. You have to adjust the pronunciation. You have to say it, it was a shit zoo, not a shit zoo. Like you, you said zoo. No, I didn't. I said you have to say zoo, because the joke is that it's not a shit zoo. It's a. But no, the joke is a zoo. But the joke is that it's both. It was the dog. Now you're gonna have to bleep a whole bunch of this, except for the part where I say shit zoo, but then I separate it out and say it was a. Well, don't do zoo. Now I can't do the vid. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> hey, so um, hold on. I do have another one. Um, oh, this ought to be good. See, I have one. It's a deer hunting joke, but you don't. You won't get it. Yeah, where, what one where you uh, provide a source of food and then you sit in a tree and you try to kill it? One of God's creatures try to sm- sm- stamp it out. With a rifle instead of going and fighting it like nature I'm not hitting, with your bare I'm not hands. hitting it with the butt of my rifle. That's what you make it sound like. Stamping. You should out. go out there with boxing gloves and do that. <laughs> that would be fair. Uh, you just jump out of the tree in there to the feeder and just <laughs> with like no shirt and like a pair of like boxing trunks. Funny story. I did know a guy who went deer hunting. A guy I used to work with in Oklahoma, and he uh, shot a deer, and uh, it was dying, and he thought it was. Like, like right there and he jumped out of the tree and the deer was alive so he pulled out his knife and just because <laughs> he thought the deer was going to gut him uh, that's this is also a man who had a windshield of his police car covered in ice and he was going to defrost it and he hit it with a hammer and <laughs> busted oh. out all the windows uh, <sighs> not your uh, sharpest knife in the drawer um, Rick we had a snow day in October. I know, I saw pictures, gosh. Abilene had a snow day in the end, at the end of October. It was That's insane. crazy. We were home, and it was snowing. And I, the good thing I have a big uh, four-wheel drive truck. I, <laughs> to get through that eighth of an inch of snow. <laughs> <laughs> that is correct. Um, I do miss the, living somewhere where there's snow at least once a year. But y'all didn't uh, have a snow day the same day. It missed y'all. Was but, it cold? Last what day Tuesday. was this of last week? Last was Tuesday. It Friday? Last, last Tuesday? Tuesday. Was it normal back then? Oh, it was cold because I picked up an extra job uh, directing traffic in the morning before my work schedule. I picked up an extra job directing traffic for like this charter school for like an hour and it was misty and it was like 37. It was miserable weather, but no snow. I am adjusting cold. with your uh, volume. Sorry, no. listener. Well, if he free. was quiet. Oh, well, I'm sorry. The uh, only time in my whole life I've ever been quiet. So we're still on the, we're, like we're recording with the guest and then having to do the intro for another person. So this is Petia mm-hmm. and you were not on the call because you were going to be late. I did not get home from work that night until too late to jump into the call. 
Petya. But we all, we, what good, great news. We're going to adjust our recording schedule so that I, that's not a problem anymore. Yes. So. We're going to start recording on Wednesdays. Yes. So that is uh, right after church. We're going to go to Chuck's after church. <laughs> and then we're going to leave Mark there. We're going to leave and leave him there on accident and uh, strand him. Have we told that? We should, we've told. Uh, we have that. not told that story. Are you sure? We have 243 episodes. Oh, that is true. We probably told all the stories. I don't think we've told that. I was in like, I think probably ninth grade. Ninth so grade. there was a restaurant right around the corner from our, ch- from our church. that we, It was a very popular, let's go there on Sunday night after Sunday night. Yeah, and yes, we went to church on Sunday night. It's weird. It's, it doesn't make any sense. But uh, So we all went there, like a whole bunch of us, after church on a Sunday night. And uh, what were we, probably in seventh grade? I was, I think I was probably either in eighth or ninth grade at this point. Okay. So we weren't old enough to drive, but like some older people in the youth group or whatever. And so we all went there and we were all going to meet back at the church for our parents to pick us up. And, uh, it was was after a retreat and there were church vans. It was Jeff Harden. Oh, so we stopped there before we got to the church. And I went to the bathroom and came out and everyone was gone. I was like, okay guys. Like, and I, (laughs) this is before cell phones. I didn't have any change. I sat on the curb. I'll never forget. I sat on the curb like, and I watched this crow like hopping along, like <laughs> eating <laughs> stuff off the ground, just sitting there like. And it was like two hours. A vulture was circling <laughs> over your head. <laughs> it was like two hours before uh, they came back. Um, oh, sorry, Mark. Yeah, <laughs> forgot all. Forgot you were even here. <laughs> I'm just, a, I'm just a skeleton, and it's been like two hours. <laughs> For two hours. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have very quickly. I have a, I have prank talk. I want to get your, uh, uh, okay, your opinion on a prank. So, Simply Humans own Dylan has been on the show several times. Lives right down the street. We go down there all the time. It's big Cowboys. Yeah. Watch the Cowboy games. Well, I will go into his his bathroom to use the bathroom. And a funny joke that I will do is I will like, uh, you know, like the bathroom. Put a bunch of baby roosts in the toilet and then like, to flush it. <laughs> like those kind of lights, you know, like the, there's like yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. and there's on over the, each sink. I will like reach up real quick and like unscrew them enough to where they just, you know, they, they won't turn on. So it's like, so, so that's a ha ha. You turn the light on and oh, Mark's been in here again. But all you do, all you have to do is turn the, it's not like I hid the yeah. light bulbs. You know, or like smash them. It was just, you just, it's just kind of annoying. You got to turn them right and then they're back on. Hilarious. So, so Dylan, in, in an effort to get me back, put a he, poisonous snake in your bed. He, t- <laughs> he shot me in the face. <laughs> <laughs> he, he took all of my socks and underwear like out of my drawer and hid them. And took photos of the streaky streaks and sent them to everyone in your office. <laughs> and they were like, "Who's are these? Oh, look, it says his name right here on the band. <laughs> that's a, story. Uh, that, that's one of the very first. <laughs> that's one of the very first humans being human. <laughs> oh, that's a great one. Oh, jeez, oh. that was my first time I ever crapped my pants a lot. <laughs> um, so. So here's the thing. So it's like, I don't, this is something that I didn't realize until it was like time for me to start getting ready for work and like trying to get kids lunches made and breakfast and everything. It's kind of the craziest time. I go to my socks and underwear drawer and then it's empty. And I'm like, (laughs) okay, this is, this is next level. This isn't just turning, you turn the lights on. That's how pranking goes. You can't meet the prank with equal resistance. You have to uh, one up until eventually Someone dies. Someone, someone gets like, eventually the prank is so terrible. Someone gets killed. So and then someone, the other person goes to prison. But hey, they won. So hey, I'm in prison, but I won the prank war. So so, so is hiding water. So is hiding the socks and underwear, which I of course I had to go commando that morning and wear like dirty socks. Um, is that an acceptable retaliation to the light bulb? How many times have you done the light bulb? Uh, three or four. Yes, it is. Okay. And I'll even like, I'll put like, I'll grab stuff like, I don't know what the heck this is, but like, you know, there's just stuff on your dresser. I'll take stuff from their dressers or by their nightstands and like put them like up in the sheets, like real far. So when they get in bed, like there's just all this stuff in their bed. I do that. You're the best house guest ever. <laughs> and this is right after I took a big dump in their master bedroom. <laughs> in the master bedroom just on the floor (laughs) (laughs) the master bathroom that is your that's okay that's how you that's your prank back now 
just take like, a dump in their floor. He comes in. I'm just like, ah, this will this will teach you. <laughs> Hide my socks. Oh, <laughs> okay. Let's get let's get to Petia after that. Um, <laughs> For that Sterling yeah. Sterling lead in, <laughs> she's gonna be so happy. <laughs> <laughs> and we talk to Petia about you do not we you common sense. Her birthday is in April. Her background giving people grace. The fact that we all have a dark side. Hmm. Tony Robbins listening to podcasts. Um, unapologetically abundant. The one thing, the love of attraction, and lying in a hammock. Here's Petia. And if you're wondering why I'm wearing a jacket, I'm in Texas, and we had a cold front front blow through last night, and it was in the 70s today, and so it's we're it's freezing when it's in the 70s. That's the Texas cold front. And if you're wondering why I'm still in my bikini, I'm in Las Vegas, okay? <laughs> And it was like 90 degrees today. My boyfriend's family live in Texas, so I oh. know it's like fluctuating like yeah. crazy. They live in Flower Mound, which is what? close to Dallas. Yeah, yeah. I'm, that's where I'm, I grew up in the, that area, in the Dallas area. My really? co-host is in Irving, which is like Flower Mound, Irving. It's, I grew up in North Dallas, yeah. Wow. Crazy. So where and are you from originally? So I'm from Czech Republic, originally. Okay. I'm so sad that, my, that Rick isn't on because he would love this because I have a story for you regarding <laughs> the Czech Republic. When I was in first grade, so this was, I was six, 1987. My dad, who is from rural Texas, opened up a bakery. The name of the bakery was Kalachi Station Bakery. Czechoslovakian pastries, right? Oh, so yes. I grew up. So people would ask my dad, like, you know, he quit his job in like the real estate world and started a, a Czechoslovakian bakery. And they were like, Oh, are you are you from there? And he'd be like, No. Like, oh, you have baking experience then. And he's like, No. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Opening a Czech bakery, moron. And he he did it. He he had it for like 20 something years and sold it and all that so i grew up on like kolache sausage kolaches and the fruit kolaches oh. cinnamon rolls and all this stuff so now i'm missing it stop I know. it yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> my grandma it's like the best chef and, oh. and, and bakery like goddess ever so every time i used to go there she would like bake and stuff and everything and now she doesn't like me so much because I'm vegan. And she was like, what do I do with you? She was like, can you eat chicken just when you come here? I was like, no, honey, it's not like on and off. Right, so right. Much. Well, it's funny. We used to have like at the bakery and we have on this podcast, it's, we've had this podcast for, for going on. It's more than seven years now. Several stories from the bakery, like have made it onto the show. Like all the listeners know about Kalachi Bakery and all the, because Mike Rick used to work there when we were kids. We worked there growing up, and it was this whole thing. But it's funny. We had this, like, uh, there was, like, a thing on the outside. It was a glass storefront, right? And there was, like, this graphic that we had that was, like, showing why kolaches were healthier than donuts. You know? And it's, like. No way. <laughs> baked. Baked, not fried. Like, like no. It's the same. It's just eat a donut if you're going to eat a donut. But it's like funny, like back in like the, you know, eight, late 80s, early 90s, like you could like make these health claims. Like, no, 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 no. Kalachis are healthy. Baked yeah, goods are healthier. They are, they're made yeah. with love and they're yeah. baked. So of course they're healthy. Oh, that's funny. And so how long have you been vegan? I mean, I ask. Um, a couple of years vegetarian and vegan for like year, something like that. Yeah. It's, yeah. I don't know. It was just like. I never liked meat, so it yeah. was just like an easy slow. transition. Yeah, yeah, for me it was. I did. I was on a vegan diet, a strict vegan diet for eighteen months. Uh, gosh, about nine years ago, um, and it was when I was training to do like long distance uh, races. So I needed to be like really, really lean and light. And so I figured I found that, and I and I recovered really fast. You know, it's very, very anti-inflammatory. Of course, you can be very unhealthy. And eat vegan. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Like paleo. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, it's really just the common sense, but I feel like sometimes common sense—it's like a superpower these days. Yeah. Oh, geez. Okay, yeah. I'm glad you said that because I had this thing, and we're not even like we haven't even gotten to like what you do yet. But this is a good thing. So, like, <laughs> like college students now, and we work with college students in the city that we live in now. We're like we're, we're west of Dallas, Fort Worth, and it's like 
a, and, and I work, I, this isn't my day job. I work for a, a, like a one-on-one mentoring organization. It's called Big Brothers, Big Sisters. Yeah, they may have yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I you heard yeah, so, yeah, Big Brothers, Big Sisters. So that's like my day job. But we work with these college students. And I'm a, so I'm a hiring, I, I hire people. And if you are a college student and you, and if I ask you a question in an interview, like what's the last book you read? And if you answer that question, you are like, you are like so far up above your peers. You know what I mean? Cause like, like, it's like, it used to be like people that read books and like, uh, I don't know, had common sense, like was just like the status quo. Right. Yeah. Now it's like, those, those are like the elite of the elite. Like you can write a sentence Wow. I don't know if it's like funny or sad. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a mix. Yeah. Yeah, it is. But because like, I don't know, like there's just so many possibilities for young people nowadays, but they get to realize that because so many young people are like entitled, you know, and yep. if they would be reading the books, they would be like, oh my gosh, I'm really so blessed. We're going to get to your book recommendations because I know based on just looking at your website, uh, you are a reader and that is exciting because I'm a reader. And we are a rare breed now. What has happened to readers? Anyway. Well, we okay. are leaders. That's why we are here. Readers are leaders. That's what I learned. Okay. Let me ask you this. And if the answer to this question is, I can't remember, that's fine. How did you come across the podcast? Did you have like a booking agent or something? Or did you find it? Yep. It was a booking agent. Okay. Yeah. Because I, I can normally find like the person, but for some reason I can't find the person that was like, Cause I know when I saw your stuff, I was like, Oh my gosh. Yeah. We, of course we have to have her on, but it was like in July that we're yeah. like, that we're, we booked out. So it's like, anyway, I just, I, I, I like to ask that, like how people yeah. have like come across us, but yeah. we were, we always working, working exclusively now with like all the different agents, awesome. agencies. So anyway. Okay. Finally to Petty. <laughs> Normally we do this game when Rick is on, we'll do like, we'll guess your birthday. We do this little game. I, since Rick isn't on, I'm just going to take one guess based on a clue that I saw. I'm going to guess your birthday is July 2nd. Is that right? Okay. There was a, Rick, we are missing you now. I know. Now there's no Rick. Okay, what's your birthday? April 26th. April 26th, 426. There, was a, there were some numbers in an email address that you sent me that July 2nd, I don't want to give away your personal email address. So I don't know what that was. Oh, it's, uh, you know why? That's um, area code for phone number for Las Vegas. I should have known that because your phone number is like, yeah, it's like, ah, uh, moron. Well, my daughter's birthday, I have two daughters. One of them, one of their birthdays is July 2nd. So I thought that would be kind of fun. Oh, that would so, be awesome. That. Okay, so we did, we did the birthday game. Okay, so Rick and I will have already done like a whole intro at the beginning of the show whenever it comes out, which we haven't done yet, but Time Travel Talk will do it. Um, so we'll just go right into kind of give us your version. What is your, like kind of the Cliff's Notes version of how you got to where you are today? Okay. Go. Starting oh, from like I where, like starting... Thinking. Starting from like maybe the hospital or like the, the bedroom that you were born in and going from there. So should I say like my mom dropped me on my head and that's why I'm so special. Perfect. Yeah, that's, that's my story too. We have that in common. Oh, that, I'm, I'm betting I'm so special and so different because my mom dropped me on my head and that's why I'm, yeah, no, I wish that it would that's be my so story. Easy, yeah. right? <laughs> But it's so fascinating because people look at me now and what they see, it's like podcasts or TV show hosts. When they let me free and travel the world, I do international retreats. Right now, I was supposed to be in Bali, so we wouldn't be talking because right. we're supposed to be hosting retreat there. So easy to look at people, like look at me now and say like, oh, she has it all together. But my life wasn't always like this, of course. Like usually there's some darkness before so i was born in czech republic that's where i'm originally from and um, i was born as an accident so my mom was dating my dad for two years then they had a first romantic encounter i don't even know if it was romantic but <laughs> and here i am we define the exact the parameters of the encounter we just right? we know we know biologically what, what happened, happened and we can move on from there Exactly. So that was kind of the finding moment that I didn't even know because from then 
I told myself the story that I don't matter. Mm. I told myself the story that I shouldn't be here and that I was an accident. And so I was feeling subconsciously the weight on me from my mom not being able to live to her fullest potential because she was 17, got pregnant, here I am. So that led into feeling I'm not enough. And that led me into eating disorder, toxic relationship, not even mentioned that I grew up, my mom remarried and my stepfather was physically and mentally abusive to me. So when I was 18, run away from home, lived in London, lived in Spain. Now I'm living in the United States, but it took me three decades to realize that I keep repeating everything over and over. And I kept running away, not from toxic relationship or my stepfather, but actually from myself. Mm -hmm. But it really took a distance and being able to pass to see that. And it took me a decade to be where I am today and do what I do. Because before that, it was different faces, different places, right. but the same thing over and over. So that's like the cliff notes. Do you like, this is something that I'm, I'm, uh, I don't know. I like asking this question. Like you, you know, 10 years ago, you were a different person 20 years ago, right? Mm -hmm. Think about the person that you were yesterday. I was yeah, right. Person. Exactly. Yes. So is it like, how, how do you kind of reaffirm to yourself or like get what I'm trying to say is like there are other people that are going through the same evolution do you find yourself getting frustrated with people or the opposite like giving extending like extra grace to people saying this is you were where I was yeah. you're gonna have to figure this out for yourself mm -hmm. and the flip side of that is hey no just do this you don't have to keep living like this for another decade like I did. Like, just make these changes now. Like, in like you know what I mean? Like that balance. Yeah, between, yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you, like, how do you handle that? So beautiful. I love that question, and I never <laughs> got it before. So thank you so much. And it's, it's so fascinating. I truly believe that because I went through this darkness, I'm a more compassionate i'm more nurturing and i became the the parent that i kind of needed on my journey and i had to reparent myself and so i feel that i'm very much i don't have a babies yet you know so i don't have a kids yet but my clients are like my younger sisters no matter what is the age you know but they're really like my little sister and i guide them and I really got to share. There are days that I want to like shake them and tell them right. enough, enough, you know, so I'm very loving, very compassionate. I found so much love in me for them because I'm like, I see you. I've been to you. I know how it sucks when people don't get you. You're alone. You're doubting yourself. And you know what, what really like, I couldn't understand it 10 years ago, but I can see it now. I was driven by the feeling inside of me that didn't make sense at all, but I knew I meant for more. Right. I knew I'm meant for more. I'm not supposed to be settling in relationship when men are cheating on me or are beating me. It, there must be more, but I didn't know because I never experienced it before. So thanks to that, I'm very compassionate. But then when I see women to go in that spiral, again and again and again i'm like okay enough 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 right you know? so i give them space to try to figure it out with my guidance but when they keep hitting the wall then i come in front of the wall and i'm like enough it's enough we gotta change something right right yeah and i think especially that's important not just in like your health and wellness journey but i would say you know uh my wife is a very proud feminist and maybe five, six, seven, ten years ago, I'm, I didn't really understand the movement, right? And if I just sat there and didn't learn and try to try to evolve and, and it can experience that, like where I am today, I have two daughters that are in sixth and fourth grade. I I am a huge feminist now. You know, it's like so. It's like, but if I I hear guys talking about it, I'm like, yeah, I I yeah, I thought that I said that I said that like not that long ago. Yep. And you like you don't want to just like be be super mean to them and like say you're an idiot. How yeah. dare you think that? Because like you know there's there's kind of that living yeah. into that space and giving people grace and all that. But at the same time, that was a great answer. Sorry, I know that's a weird a weird question, and I didn't. No, really I, I I think yeah. it's brilliant, you know, and I think it's very unique and very honest because, like. 
some people will be afraid to say the truth. Some people will be like, oh, of course I'm loving, of course I'm nurturing, but that's a BS. We all <laughs> have the dark side and the light side when I'm very loving, very nurturing, but then like you come to the edge of my patience and I'm like, okay, Petia, breathe, don't say nothing right now. Right, right, <laughs> don't right. answer the message right now because my one-on-one -on -one coaching clients, they have a direct access to me through the Voxer. Right. Sometimes they send me like a long message. I'm like, again? <laughs> so I'm like, okay, Petia, put your phone down, go for a walk. Take a breath. Park, yeah. Deep breath and don't react, you know? It doesn't matter how long we are doing the inner work. There will be times that you are like, I'm a fire. Don't touch me right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's good to hear. That is refreshing. Like, cause you know, you'll have people that are like, like looking at your stuff and all this. She's got it all together. It's like, I could oh, never no. be like, nobody that. does. I know. Come I know. On, nobody does. That's yeah. not, you can't. That's not. And I'm really all about being unapologetically you. And it doesn't mean being arrogant or mean, but you know, Mark, for three decades, I was wondering why the heck I'm here. Why am I here? What is my purpose? And now that I look at it, I know what is my purpose. And every and each one of you knows. When you stop fooling yourself, you will realize that your purpose is to be you. Right. No one is like you. The way you think, the way you really um, like ex express yourself, it's you. Some people like me. Some people, they think I'm weird. Some people don't like me. Go for you. You're not my person. Right. And I don't care. But I cared too much. Yeah. So much that I wouldn't, like, I would not. I would wear masks. I would be pretending that everything is okay when it's not. I would be pretending all my stuff is together. And then I would come home and I would feel empty and depressed. Because the heaviest things you really can wear is the mask day to day and then you are not living your truth and i don't think there's a worse thing than die without living right oh man oh okay i'm sorry rick would make fun of me so i wear this and it's uh memento mori memento oh, vivere oh. that remember your mortality and remember that you have to live wow i, I keep this I keep this right here with me all the time. So anyway, <sighs> sometimes, sometimes it pulls my chest hair and I'm like, ah, and I use that as like, remember. Yes, that's my moment to say, <laughs> yes, remember. <laughs> Love that. Anyway. So uh, yeah. So there's one thing that I saw on your website that I wanted to ask you about. Um, because I, I try to get this across to people and, and then I also try to like do this myself. And that, that is the, like investing in yourself, like money in yourself. Like I just bought, I, uh, my daughters and I started Taekwondo a year ago together. And so we're like on the same levels, you know, we're learning the same stuff and breaking the boards and stuff. And one of the things to get a black belt is you have to be able to like get pretty close on your splits. So I bought this like contraption that you like sit in and there's like a wheel and it like, wow. and it like takes your legs like, Wow. It's like a martial arts thing, right? So I bought that, not as just like some like, oh yeah, I'm never gonna eat. Like I bought that because it's going to have some, I want the memory of us all getting black belts together, you know? So like, so like mountain bikes, gym memberships, things like that. How, what is kind of your philosophy for yourself on kind of when you decide to spend money on yourself and when it's like, uh, okay, this is, I could do without this. This isn't like helping me in any way. You have the best questions ever. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send that clip to Rick because Rick always so makes good. fun of my questions. So I'm so happy that you just said that. <laughs> no, and I mean it really. I'm, I, I really mean it. Those questions are so amazing. And so it's like a twofold. So when I started this journey, I was like <laughs> the ego, the pride. I can figure it out. I can do it myself. So I was like DYI girl, everything. Asking Uncle Google, YouTube, courses. <laughs> podcasts, books, all of it by myself, you know, like I'll figure it out because I was afraid to ask help. I was afraid to like seem silly or weak or not good enough. And then I need others. I was trying to like really prove people that I'm independent and strong and I can do it by myself and I don't need anyone. And it sucked so bad because then you are you with you and you know when you're on your journey in the beginning and when I was so like like I don't want to say like 
I was like, not angry, angry, but like when people tell you all of the answers are within you, I was pissed. <laughs> like, what do you mean? I feel it doesn't angry. make any sense. Yeah. No, it doesn't. When you're at the beginning of your journey and right. people tell you just tap within, I was like, what do you want me to tap at? What are you talking about? So at the beginning of my journey, it was, you know, pretty much like solo adventure. And then I was working in a corporate and it was toxic environment, you know, people gossiping, complaining, living for the weekend. And it started to boil in me. I was like, I don't want to listen to this. So what I started to do, listen to the podcast. Yeah. That's what I started to do. Which can I ask what what was like, because I remember like my first podcast, what was like the first one that like was like, oh, this is changing my life. Oh my gosh. You know what? Like, to be honest, the first thing that I started to listen on YouTube was like Les Brown and Louise Hay and, you know, Dr. Wayne Dyer. Those were like more of the videos that I was listening. And then of course I was addicted to Tony Robbins. I was like, everything is like, oh my God, he was really my guru back then. But then I found out uh, my uh, first coach, actually my first life coach was a podcaster that I was listening, Rob Dial. Um, I think it's his podcast now, it's called Mindset Mentor, I believe. It's many, many, many years ago, Uh like six years. (laughs) So he was like my first one, you know, I'm like, I want you to coach me. So it was, it was amazing. So that's where I kind of started with him and then I think that's the one that I like strongest, like remember. Uh-huh. And uh, then I started to listen to Lori Harder uh-huh. um, on your happy podcast. Yeah. And she inspired me to be where I am today. Because when I listened to her first episode, I started already my social media marketing business. I had social media marketing agency as my first business. And I was researching podcasters and how they do their advertising and stuff. So when I listen to her, I find myself weeping, crying on the floor in a bathroom, listening to her first podcast. I was like, oh my gosh, she's like me. I can't believe it. So that was the moment that I realized, oh my gosh, if she can do it, I can do it. Right. She was doing podcasts, she was doing live events. So I went like through her path, but my own way. So I started my podcast. I did my live event last year. Thankfully, I didn't, you know, when I get crazy inspired ideas, I go for it. Yeah, good. People tell me like, oh, you need one year to plan your life event. Three months later, Petia yeah. is hosting a life event for 100 women. Okay. People tell me that I need nine months to plan like a retreat. Two months later, I'm in Bali hosting my retreat. You know, it's like right. no time like now because yeah. now imagine if I would wait, look at us now. I can't do anything. Yeah. Here and now in Latin, tattooed on oh my forearm. My gosh. You see, so no, we're like the same person. And living, you're like embodying it, literally embodying it. So those were the podcasts that really like changed my life and gave me hope. And it took like I would say like five more years to really like embody who I am. And the biggest transformation mark was like I would say about three years ago, I had a mentor and he had me do um, like core, core value exercises. And I realized in that moment that my core values didn't match my reality. Huh. Nothing. Like my relationship, my business, my clients. I was doing the things that I thought that I should or could because I was good in them, but not because I really wanted to. Right. So three years ago, I let everything go, happily divorced here. Um, and uh, I just let go of everything, my business, my clients, my relationship. And that was the moment that I really realized that I get to be me, unapologetically me. And that's when I started to do my life and business coaching for women. That's when I started my podcast, attracted the love of my life, who treats me until today like the queen. And it's beautiful, but I couldn't have those things or be who I am today if I would keep living on other people's terms instead of being me. So that's right. right. And how and how many people like never never come to that self awareness, right? How many people live their whole lives and never had that moment where like, wait a second, this isn't what I want to do, yeah. right? And it's like God, that, that like taking a second 
and like being mindful and like like looking inward, which is like such an uh, abstract thing. If, if you're beginning your journey, like what does looking inward mean? I'm like, I'm trying to look upside my eyeballs or something like, you know, like literally, right? But it's like, if you don't get to that place of self-awareness, like you'll never, like you, uh, my, I have an older brother who is a graphic designer. He's like very famous graphic designer. He's worked for, I mean, I could brag about Nike, Google, New York Times, ESPN. He's done, he's all, he's like the best at what he does in the world. And his story is, like he just started doing what he loved doing until he eventually started getting paid to do it. You know, it's like, he didn't like kind of fit into the the mold. He just kind of made his own. And now again, like he was young when he started that it's hard if you're, you know, you're I'm almost 40, I've got three kids and I, you know, it's like, if you're in that phase of life, it's a little different, but at the same time, I mean, there's still, you, you're, you're never stuck. You're never, there's never like a, a, a no option. You can always, like kind of break free and, and, you know, do what you really want to do. Like, I, I love that, like kind of behaviors that align with your core values, like is such a more like, the, sorry, I'm like rambling here, but like everything that I do, whether it's nutrition, movement, managing stress, sleep, it's like, my goal is I want to be crawling around on the ground with my grandkids. Right. It's like that. It's like that future it's not about how what i look like at the beach next summer it's not about anything other than the longevity right and i'm just thinking like at the end of that that phase i want to look back and under, you know okay sorry very quick story and then i'm going to ask you a, a, another couple questions so like i've got this here and now you know on my arm and i'm getting like this memento mori tattoo like this half sleeve and all this stuff and my sixth grade daughter a, a couple weeks ago we had just eaten dinner and I went out and I'd like, I just sat down on the back porch and my three kids were on the trampoline and they were like, dad, come jump with us. And I was like, no, oh. I was like, I just ate. I'm full. I guess I usually just eat one big meal a day. And it's just like, and my, my sixth grader goes, dad, here and now we could all be, we could all be dead tomorrow. You take advantage of every opportunity. And I was like, dang, you got me. <laughs> and so I got up and I went and jumped with them, but I was like, okay, you're kind of starting to get it a little bit. Aww. Like you just need to internalize that mm -hmm. and behave and do things like with that like, kind of idea, kind of always kind of in the background. But anyway, I love that, you know, yeah. thank you so much for sharing that story because I truly feel that it doesn't matter what we say or what we do, like people will watch us and then they will listen, you know, because if you yeah. say like, oh, you got to live here and now, but you're not embodying it, right. they'll be like, what are you talking about? You're not yeah. doing it. What, who you are to tell me what to do if you're not even doing it. So right. really embodying your beliefs yes. is what's going to like really teach the people around you. Right. Yes. Awesome. Okay. Let's talk about your podcast. Um, it is unapologetically abundant, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. Found anywhere podcasts are sold, right? So any, any, all the places and talk about like, tell, promote yourself. What are, what are the other places? Where can people find you? So unapologetically abundant, like you said, it's all over and everywhere. And then I love hanging out on Instagram. That's like my place, just my name, Petia Kolibova. I do um, stories every day, you know, mini trainings there. But also for women, I have a free Facebook group, Unapologetically Abundant Women, where I do trainings. I have a guest speakers. It's just absolutely amazing. It's something that I wish that existed when I started my journey. So, and then PetiaKalabova.com yes. is that kind of like where they can go to find yeah. all this stuff? Uh-huh. Okay. I'm going to put that in there. Okay. So I got two more questions for you. The first one is if you had like, you're in an elevator with somebody and it's a short building and you don't have very much time and they're like, Hey, what kind of like, what book should I read? Like what, like three books are you telling them? They don't know anything about you. You just like, have three books that you need them to read. What are the books? I love it. So the first one would be The One Thing from uh, Jay Papasan. I absolutely love it. It gave me super much clarity on how to break big goals into the small goals. And then I am really into woo-woo. So I would tell them Abraham Hicks and the love of attraction. It's basically just the energy would you send out there, you attract that. And the third one, you know, I would really go back into Louise Hay and you can heal your life because very often 
all of our physical, you know, diseases are based on our emotional state. So that was a book who really shifted my mindset and helped me to take care of my body in a brand new level because, you know, I used to do fitness competitions and all these things. So I was doing nothing, nothing from place of love about my body. And it really helped me to shift it. So all of this would be like, you know, like mind, body, right, spirit. Right, right. That isn't like, I applaud you because as a, when, when you ask a reader that question, most of the time their the inner gears just kind of go and they can't give you an answer because there's too many. I have like so many, but right. I also, yeah, no. That was really good. I'm very impressed that you were able to just go boom, boom, boom. There's your, there's your books. And we did not, listener, viewer, we did not plan that ahead of time. Um, okay. And then the final question. What is one thing that you enjoy about life or something you do to make life more enjoyable? So it could be like, it doesn't have to have anything to do with anything that we talked about, just like a hobby, something that you look forward to. Like for me, like mountain biking right now, is like a big thing for me. Like what, what is your thing right now? You know, like right now, right now, like two days ago, I bought myself finally a hammock for my backyard. Nice. <laughs> so I'm like, when it's because, you know, we're in Vegas. So up until now, it was like 100 degrees. So oh. early morning and late night, I was laying in it. So that's my place right now. But before that, uh, we live very close to Red Rock. So uh -huh. we nature and I just bring my books, my blanket, my snacks, and I'm there all day. That's me. Awesome. Well, we barely scratched the surface. I can't believe 30 minutes has already gone by, but you are just a ray of light. I'm going to be in a good mood the rest <laughs> of the evening after talking to you. Thank you so much for your time and for doing this. We, I would like to, whenever this goes up, there'll be a video file and an audio file. I'll send them to you and then maybe we can schedule. I know we're like booking into January right now. Like we can maybe get you on like in the spring or something, have you back mm -hmm. on and like talk about like the other 99% of the things that you're an <laughs> expert in that we barely even got to. So that's, yeah. Thank you so much. You're awesome. And I'm looking forward to talking to you soon. Thank you so much. Super appreciating you. And I love who you are being and what you are doing. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Awesome. We'll talk to you soon. You're listening to the Simply Human Podcast. All right. That was Petia. She's great. All the stuff will be in the show notes. PetiaKolobova.com. She's great. We talked about kolaches. I forgot to mention that in the show notes. Mm. Uh, we talk about kolache bakery being Czechoslovakian. Um, kolache talk. Mm -hmm. It was great. And uh, yeah, so tip of the week. We haven't done a tip of the week in a long time. The tip of the week is uh, go watch a Tony Robbins YouTube video. Okay. Also, the tip of the week is Google... <laughs> Backyard wrestler breaks both legs. Oh my gosh! And no, do not that. Google this. I it's feel like the we should. Horrific thing ever. I feel like we should share screen and watch it all together. I, you've seen it, right? Where it's oh, just. Yeah, I'm the one who texted it to you. Oh yeah, he jumps and just turns, and he lands. <laughs> okay, so when you're counting the red flags here, first of uh, all, backyard wrestling. You look at this backyard wrestling ring, and it's all made out of plywood and like rope. And then <laughs> the lighting is bad. Oh. There's like one floodlight in the corner of this guy's backyard. So you can't even see what's going on. And there's like four people. If you find yourself in that, you're walking into a wrestling ring that's homemade. There's only one light shining on it. And there's only four people there to cheer you on. And you haven't exercised in 10 years. <laughs> yeah, you have made a grave error. Like, <laughs> stop before it gets worse. Oh, both of his knees just buckle backwards and he like, falls forward. I think I heard a story the next oh. day or two that, like, there's a huge amputation GoFundMe because he's going to have to lose both his legs. Hmm. Um, that's the my, most horrific injury I've ever seen. My beard is getting long. It's getting gray too. Oh, no. I know. I had a good time FaceTiming with Rob. Rob is the one who he started, <laughs> he started uh, sh like machine gun texting all of these Sean Connery joke texts to me. And I was like, what? <laughs> what? I, can't, I can't repeat some of them. Uh, but, but we, you know, because my brother Brad would have the Sean Connery uh, uh, impersonation. And that's what he was referencing Mishael, Bullets, things like that. And uh, beating your wife, yeah, Junior. Look what you've done. And so he he writes me, "I'm writing a mission." <laughs> I can't say that. Um, <laughs> I can't do that one either. And it, he made a, a a rock, the Rock movie reference, and I was like so confused. I was like, "Are you are you watching the Rock?" 
And then he wrote back, no, this is how I'm emotionally processing the passing of Sean Connery. And then I'm like, OMG, he died this morning? And he wrote, he wrote back, OMG, this is not how I wanted you to find out. <laughs> and Speaking then, of funny texts, uh, real quick before we end the show, uh, we have the long-standing group text between me and Mark and, <clears throat> and Steve, who was our youth minister growing up. <laughs> it's a it's a joke. Time. you only get if you watch if you watch the video you have to watch it that's uh, not, but uh happen. we we will ro- watch the cowboys games together and comment on them and uh there's a game a couple of games ago i don't know when this is going to air but uh, andy dalton who's the backup quarterback for the cowboys gets like a super cheap shot and like almost has his head ripped off clean off his body and i'm going to text to the group uh andy just died well, I didn't send it to the group. I accidentally sent it to my mom and dad. We have a cousin. Cousin Andy. Andy. And <laughs> immediately my phone rings. It's my dad. And I'm like, what? And then I That's see the text from my mom. He did? And I was like, what? And it takes it's me a second. And cousin I Andy I was like, died. No, 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 guys, 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 guys. I sent it to the wrong person. I'm talking about Andy Dalton, the football player. You think I would notify you via text if I found out that Andy our cousin dad. died? Like. You're old. Like, figure out the difference between when you make a phone call, when you send a text. Right. That'll help all this. Yeah. Like, if you just want to share something. How's things, how things how things are going? Not a phone call. Yeah. Text. Send yeah. a text. Relative dies. Phone, phone call. call. Not text. You need to write a book about all that. All right. It'll be a short it, book. It's it, like one chapter. You just the know. Time I accidentally sent my parents' yeah. candy diet. <laughs> all right. Um, that is episode 243, and that's going to do it for this edition of the Simply Human Podcast. And remember. Sunday night. Yeah, and yes, we went to church on Sunday night. It's weird. It's, it doesn't make any sense. So until next time, enjoy yourself.